Okay, so this might be weird to put into a video, but I just had to have a drink of beer for a second because today we're shooting, obviously you're watching this video, we're shooting the technical riding video, the off-road technical video. And like dummies, Law and I decided to clear some stairs on a 16 inch tire, which was a bad idea. So I'll let Law walk you through what kind of just happened. Tell us what happened at the skate park and then upstairs at the wood shop. Coming alive. All right, so we got a little excited. Um, so when you're riding and jumping stairs, you normally want to have a little bit of decline, and it also depends on the amount of stairs that you're jumping. So maybe if you're doing a four-step, three-step, you don't have to worry about a thing. It can be landing on any level surface, that's fine. What we did was an eight stair. So if you're doing an eight stair, it's gonna be way more space and gravity is gonna give you that little bit of extra force downwards and then you have a higher likelihood of breaking a rim. If you're doing the same thing on a bicycle and you have the same amount of weight coming down on the rim, you're gonna do the same amount of damage. But for average riding, no need to worry. Just bring your PSI up higher. If you're gonna be riding maybe 20 PSI, maybe 25, 30, you have a higher likelihood of denting your rim if not completely shredding it if you're gonna be doing heavy landing or if you're gonna be a tiny doing a tiny hop and then if your wheel ends up spinning backwards, you have a higher likelihood of unseating your inner tube and like ripping the Schrader valve out. So what happened was it bent the rim, so we brought it upstairs to the wood shop and we went to go pound it out uh, with a mallet. It was going very well actually. It was, well, so you want to be able to slap the piece of wood, or you take a piece of wood and then mallet it down, but use the flat end of the piece of wood so you apply less pressure across the whole rim rather than direct pressure on a single point. It helps to use a heat gun. Heat guns are definitely better for if you're, if you're doing some job like this. Anyways, like I said, we went to the wood shop. It was going fairly well and then it didn't. It was that one fatal hit and boom, there was a small crack. Uh, Law seemed pretty confident that was not a huge deal, so he put some <laughs> gaff tape on it. We kept moving forward. We were done. We filled it up to 40 psi, and I rode two feet in the wood shop and catastrophic explosion out the side of this thing. <laughs> and that was why I don't. I was like such a mess. I was like, "What's going on? Like it's crazy. Like it blew out the side. I'm like standing on this thing, and then it like punctured. It was it was awful. I wish we were recording. It was. It was, just imagine you're riding a wheel and the entire rim explodes out the side and your air uh, is released. I mean, that was... Anyways, I'm gonna try to salvage the video because I still believe in showcasing that this wheel is um, a pretty good all-around wheel. It can ride on the street, obviously, and it can do a bit of off-road and some, some, you know, a bit of technical riding as long as you're not an idiot like us. So we're gonna head over to the city and uh, kind of showcase what this thing can do. We might hit some trails too, so uh, let's do it. So far, while well, we've been riding like a little bit on the uh, these little grass plane 
and a couple of boulders. It's this wheel is definitely feeling like a 16x or uh, even a Nikola for that matter. Just trying to crank up a hill. The motor is definitely a little bit more underpowered than we prefer. It's been affecting us for the way that we end up uh, accelerating, braking. You know those that some in some of these clips where you'll see me uh, braking at high speed. You'll force me, uh, I end up forcing myself to do a little bit of uh, side carving just to reduce a little bit of that uh, momentum and put a, little, uh, a lot less stress on the motor. Something I've definitely been noticing, technical riding, it's great having the higher pedals. It's a nice feel whenever you want to power slide or do something in terms of just like that quick quick uh, pivot. It's, you, you don't have any other wheels that can compare to it right now. For a high speed wheel, uh, I would honestly wind it for a little bit more torque than just speed. The Yes, the selling point is looking like that we want to have extra speed for a 16 inch wheel. And on top of that, you have so many other selling points. You have the LCD screen, you've got all the extra amenities like the pedal hangers, the, the height is beautiful. Being able to change those little things and make it more of your own is awesome. But at the same time, it's hard to make it your own when you're not able to accelerate and brake properly in the same way that you would other wheels or you would want to in other wheels. So if you want to make a comparable pad setup to me for this wheel, I would honestly just take some exercise mat, double-sided tape, and then maybe some DKL skateboard grip, the rubber stuff. It's, uh, it's, it's rubber skateboard grip. That's exactly what it sounds like. The, uh, the way you tack it on, you can either use Velcro if you're feeling it, but me, I like to just use the double-sided tape directly to it and make it shift less while it's on the wheel. If you use the little wedges to hold your feet down rather than just a big gap, it'll allow for you to really micromanage the wheel and give you little detailed movements for carving and just knowing where the wheel is while you're airborne and all that. If you want to do the one size fist modes route and just buy something and do the one and done, pick up some Clark pads, it'll be nice. Uh, you're not going to regret it. There's a couple, you can feel a little bit less comfort if, versus doing DIY just because it's not custom to your leg and all that. You can add wedges to it if you want. I'll probably create a tutorial one of these days. Just go Clark pads if you don't want to make your own. Easy day. All right, so we're going to salvage the rest of the day by going around and finding some trails here in Central Park. Hopefully we're successful. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you're enjoying the video so far, but we're just going to cruise around, find some trails, and just kind of have a good time. So enjoy the rest of the video.
All right, guys, this has been a crazy video. It did not go how I planned, but I think you'll get a lot of value out of it in the end. Um, if you didn't already know, I've made seven other videos on the V12. So go to the playlist on my channel. You can find all the rest and sort of sink your teeth into all the other things that this wheel has to offer. So go find that. Go watch those. Uh, once again, this has been sponsored by eWheels.com here in North America and eRides.com in the UK and Europe. So go find them if you're making a purchase. If you're going to buy the V12, there's links down below. Those links help me. They give a little kickback. And I think eRides gives you a bit of a discount. So if you're in UK and Europe, you'll enjoy that. But thank you so much for watching. And uh, as I always say, keep riding, never stop.